Apple just had their annual WWDC where they always start off with the Good morning heard around the world and unveil their latest updates to the iPhone's operating system in the form of iOS 16. This year, Apple has focused on refining their OS system by updating and adding key features. So even though it isn't a complete redesign, it's still an integral step in the right direction. So here are my top five iOS 16 features just announced. As the smart home space continues to grow, with plenty of smart home accessories out on the market, with many more being added, having a hub for your smart home is becoming not only important, but even more common. Apple's take on this smart home hub is their HomeKit app, and this year it sees a redesign to make it even more seamless and easier to use. Starting off with the main tab, you're now able to see your entire home on one page with the accessories broken down into rooms. Apple has also added all new categories such as climate, lights, security, and more all located on the top of the screen. So you can now tap on the category and bring up all the accessories that are relevant to that category organized by room. Apple, along with their partners and other industry leaders, have come together to help create a more connected home ecosystem by creating a new smart home connectivity standard called Matter. Matter enables smart home accessories to work together across platforms. So when it goes into effect, you'll have more options when building out your smart home across different platforms. And for me personally, as a new homeowner, I'm excited to start building out my dream smart home setup. We all love taking photos with our iPhones, whether it's of our family members or pets, capturing that moment that we can later share with others is part of our daily lives. And with iCloud sharing photos, not only has it gotten better, but it's also gotten a lot easier as well. Normally, you would have to send photos between yourself and family members to get a complete account of a family event. Now with iCloud shared photo library, you along with five others can all contribute to one photo library shared between you all. You can either share all your photos, start sharing after a specific date, or share selected photos from your personal photo library. You also have the option to enable photo sharing right in camera. So as you take the photo, they are automatically being sent to the shared library. You can also have sharing switched on automatically when taking photos with or nearby one of the members of your shared library. If you're out at the park with your family, this feature can be enabled automatically. Everyone has equal permissions in the shared library so if one person edits the photo, it will reflect across the board. This is a great feature that my family and I will definitely be able to take advantage of and enjoy for years to come. Throughout the day, we receive and review a ton of notifications, whether that's text messages, emails, or alerts from one of the many apps installed on our phones, notifications seems to take over our lock screens. With iOS 16, that's no longer the case. Notifications will roll in at the bottom of your lock screen as you receive them, keeping your lock screen clean and minimal. Not only that, but you can also choose to hide your notifications altogether for an ultra clean looking lock screen. But there are times when you're gonna be okay with receiving a multitude of notifications because you're trying to keep track of something like a basketball game. But now with iOS 16, you have a new feature called Live Activities. Live Activity works off of your lock screen and continuously updates you in real time instead of having a series of notifications come in. And it doesn't just work with tracking the NBA game, but you can also track your Uber ride, get updates on your workout, and much more. This year, Apple has added three key features to messages to improve the overall experience. The first ability is to edit a message you just sent in case of a typo or another error. This is something I deal with every day, having to send multiple messages to correct a typo. Being able to just edit that message instead of sending multiple ones is a bit of a game changer. The second feature is undo send. If you ever sent a message to the wrong person or realize that the message may come off differently than you intended, now you'll be able to recall that message immediately after sending it. And the last feature is the ability to mark any message thread unread if you're busy at the moment and need to come back to the conversation at a later point. 
All three of these features will improve the way that we use messages. The lock screen on the iPhone has remained unchanged for several years. This year with iOS 16, Apple's bringing its biggest update to the lock screen ever. And I believe it's its best and most important update of iOS 16. This year, the iPhone's lock screen can be personalized much more than before. When you add a photo to the lock screen, it will now have a subtle depth effect added to it, which gives it a portrait-like look with the subject of the photo being placed in front of the time. You're also able to customize the lock screen right from the lock screen itself. There are also different lock screen styles that you can simply swipe between that changes the color filter, background, and the font of the time to give your lock screen a quick refresh. Widgets also make their way to the lock screen as well now, and when you're all done setting up your lock screen, you can add a whole new one to customize for a different situation, like the weather. There are also wallpaper galleries with wallpapers like Emoji, Pride, Astronomy, and much more. Some wallpapers even have animations when you swipe into the home screen. So this year with iOS 16, you're able to add even more customization to your iPhone via your lock screen. And you're able to set up several lock screens for different situations. This is by far the biggest update to the lock screen so far. There are several updates and improvements coming to iOS 16, like the next gen Apple CarPlay. It will provide deep integration with the car's hardware to give it a unified and consistent experience throughout, but it won't be coming until late 2023, so that's why it did not make my top five list. So that was my top five iOS 16 features announced at this year's WWDC. Stay tuned for a follow-up review once the public beta launches. And for some more WWDC coverage, coming up here on the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Hit the bell icon to stay notified and I'll catch you guys in the next one.